Now I'm going to show you how we use the Octi Hoops to embroider directly on baseball caps. Doesn't seem like it would be possible, but it is. And to easily place your design on the cap, we're going to use the stick and rinse stickers. You can actually draw directly on our stick and rinse stabilizer, tracing over coloring books, magazines, or any other printed media that you have. You simply lay it down on top, and I would secure it using some tape so that it doesn't move around on you while you draw. And then you simply use a marker and you can draw right directly on our stick and note stabilizer. You can even color it in as the printing is on here should you want. You can also use water soluble crayons and markers that you find in the store for children so you don't have to worry about any of the ink getting on the fabric or remaining on the fabric after you're done with your project. There's a variety of different style caps and inside we're gonna ha we have different issues to deal with where your needle could break if, if it struck them so you want to make sure that you use a 9014 universal needle on this and we want to get this sweatband to stay out of the way so you can take tape and just kind of tape it down That'll help it stay out of your way. And then positioning your embroidery on the front of the baseball cap might seem difficult, but if you use the stickers, it's not going to be difficult at all. So here I have this little sticker, and I'm going to apply it to the front of the baseball cap, and that'll make it so I know exactly where it's going to sew out. In order to embroider the baseball cap, we're going to have to flatten it out like this. So we trace and cut out a piece of stick and tear that's large enough to fit onto the back of the medium frame. And pull back and peel it back. Stretching across. Okay, when you hear the sound of the drum, you know you're ready. But before we place the cap in here, we first need to place the sticker onto the baseball cap. And since this is such a light colored pink, that it's really kind of difficult to see, and a large area of thread will need to be stitched out for that to, to cover nicely. I'm going to place some of our pink cover up underneath the sticker and, have, and stitch through that and then I don't need to use as much thread. It won't take as long as well and the cap won't be as bulky. To do this you simply peel off the release liner of the sticker and set it down. And you want to cut a piece bigger than the heart, but not so that it extends out to the outer borders of the sticker. Then you reposition it until you know that it is going to lay flat. This would definitely have been better to have cut my stick and rinse wider than the actual embroidery area. And then you position the sticker how you want it to be on the front of your cap. Looking at the distance the embroidery goes from both sides, I think I need to move this just a little bit that way. The most important part would be that the bottom of the lettering appears straight in relation to the bill. So you could use a ruler or a measuring tape to see that you are equal distance from both sides of that. To help hold the area down that has the cover up underneath, I'm going to put some of my basting glue on my finger and go from behind and kind of spread it out. So that it lays nice against the cap. And now we're ready 
to lay the baseball cap down. You can see how I'm pulling the back of the cap out. Anything you can do to help it lay flat within the frame. And unfortunately that tape did not hold on the sweatband. So I'm going to actually cut into the sweatband a little bit to help pull that back as I lay it down. So you can see inside how everything is laying flat. As long as the fabric is laying flat, you can embroider right over that. I've chosen my colors of thread and I'm going to use a white bobbin underneath. And this is a 100 weight polyester white bobbin thread. If you use a lighter weight or thinner bobbin thread, you can lay more thread on the top of the material, which is where we need it most to cover up the fabric. Because of the thick area where the seam is on the baseball cap, this area here, I'm going to use a free motion foot with the octi hoop so that it holds that fabric down better, eliminating my fingers from having to be placed onto the baseball cap. This is the style foot that I prefer, a, like a horseshoe shape so that there's full visibility in the front area. And you can see that the frame is low enough to slide underneath with the presser foot on. Now before beginning, you want to choose the direction you want your stitches to go. And I think I'd like this, this whole design for the stitching to go up and down. That means that if, I'm, if my hoop is sideways, I move it this way. If my hoop is up and down, or if, it, if I'm able to read the word quilting, then I will, I'll move it up and down. And if I were to move it slightly off, I would have to still move it in that, in that direction where it goes up and down. This can help you to not lose track of that fact by drawing little arrows on your material in the outer areas so that you know not to lose that stitch direction. First, bring up your bobbin thread. We're going to sew a few stitches. And then cut that off. You're going to hear a little bit more plucking sound as the needle is uh, exiting the vinyl material, the cover-up material. It tends to make it a, a louder noise, but there's nothing to be concerned about. One of the most important things is, is to keep your elbows down. Sometimes I need to push the machine further away from me so that I can rest on the table. If you're having to hold your arms up, you don't have as much accuracy when sewing, just as you wouldn't have as much accuracy when writing if you had your arm in the air. So we always want to keep our hand down, elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Have a little talk with yourself before you begin. Say, come on now, relax, it's time to embroider. And we go ahead and begin. I'm doing small, tight stitches along the border of the heart so that when I go to tear this away, the, the cover-up tears clean away. And the reason that lifted a little bit is because the stick and rinse wasn't far enough and I didn't put enough of the basting glue back there. So I'm going back again. This is to perforate the fabric cover so that when I go to tear it away, it comes clean away. And then I do what I call cross hatching. I'm just going to go back and forth a few times to secure the fabric cover. I'm just going to go over. This will help the fabric cover lay, lay nice and flat while you do your embroidery. Hop over. Okay. 
Now the foot's getting close there, so I'm just going to spin the hoop around. Choose another hole on the frame. And continue. So I'm going to start my up and down movement. It's a good place to start it because it's so small I might forget it's there. So up and down. It's not as easy to see your work with the foot on, but it keeps the baseball cap holding down better for you. the thick area and it's hold, the foot helps to hold that down. The fact that I'm using a 90-14 needle and I don't have to worry about my needle breaking. Another reason the needle doesn't break is that I don't use that needle down option on the machine. I always have that needle stop up. So here I'm doing a little forward and back, forward and back stitch along the edge of the embroidery. It makes a nice finish along the edge of that. If you hear the plucking get too loud, then you know you're sitting in the same spot too long or you have too much thread in that area. Okay, and again. Keeping my stitch direction always running up and down in this particular design. Nicely that fills in and the pink below it prevents any white from showing through. Pay attention to your straight, your little arrow so you don't lose track in each section. forward and reverse along the outer edge of the heart, not along areas where the other colors will come in, because that will create uh, too much bulk.
last one I can. So that is what I did in here in the middle. I didn't go too far in either direction, so I didn't have to worry about going in areas where I didn't want to. And now I can take my time and go slower along the edges. Then we go back and forth again to give it a nice finished edge. People are not going to believe you did this free motion. Take your time, go slow in these little small areas. Now I'm gonna hop over. Did that all with my feed dogs up. I forget all the time because it really doesn't have a lot of bearing on it, but I'll go ahead and lower it for the rest of this time. Now the risk you have with doing these little popovers or creating these carryover stitches is that it might get stuck on the foot. So after you secure the next area, go ahead and take a moment and cut. Before I think I'm finished, I'm going to verify and look all around and see if there's any spots where I could have stitched more. I think there's a little area there and a little spot there. Or should you ever take your project out of the hoop and then realize that you did not finish an area, you can always just lay it right back in the hoop on top of the stick and tear by patching it and placing it back down. Okay, so there's an area I didn't fill in, another area. And I'm just gonna cut my thread instead of wasting the thread to carry over. Now if you do this, if you travel across, make sure you don't just drag it across because you'll end up with a straight line of thread. You have to go up and down in order for it to not show that you were lazy and hopped over that way. And I think I'm done with the pink. But I'm wrong because I gotta do the inside of the needle. always a good idea to hold it up and look at it in different angles to see that you did in fact cover all of that area that you wanted to. 
And now I have to decide what stitch I'm going to use for the monogram and I, I, I'm going to use a zigzag stitch and have my stitches run this direction. That will make it uh, appear higher than the heart below it. You could also go around the heart with a darker color pink to outline it should you want to. But I kind of like the, the lighter look. So since I'm going to go with a darker thread, I'm going to change my bobbin thread to a darker bobbin thread. This is a good time to look at the back and cut off any carryover stitches on the back side. Especially if you can't lower your feed dogs on your machine. Even though I'm going to do a zigzag, I'm going to outline the cue here with a straight stitch first. And that kind of holds it down. It's easier to see before you lay a bunch of thread down that you have this nice clean edge that you're creating. The plucking sound you're hearing is simply the, the area where there's lots of thread. Okay, now I can either switch to a zigzag stitch or I can simply move the hoop in a zigzag manner. And in the areas where I'd, I would have to taper and keep changing my zigzag stitch width, I prefer to just move the hoop in a zigzag motion rather than switching to a zigzag stitch. And you can just do one stitch at a time. I did not do a perfectly straight across angle. that edge. See how beautiful that looks? Now I'm going very slow, taking my time so that I really am happy with the work. Now I'm keeping the hoop so that the entire word quilting will be slightly at an angle because I chose that when I started. If you pay attention before you begin, you could have I could have done it a lot easier by having it go direct or side to side as I had originally planned. But isn't it nice that I can do these really large stitches actually wider than my sewing machine could normally zigzag? is in your way, lift up, pull whatever it is aside, and lay it down flat again. Oh, I have this tail the whole time, so I want to make sure you don't do that to yourself. beautiful cue. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest. See you on the other side.
The key to doing well is to slow down. Don't feel like you have to do this really fast just because um, it seems as though people sew really fast. I'm taking my time and I'm doing this really slow. I just sped up the camera so that you could see it and not have to sit there and wait for me to do it in a very slow manner. Now for choosing the color for the heart, I'm going to leave the dark colored thread in there because the pink that I've chosen is a darker color pink. And on these hearts I want them to go up and down, the stitch direction. zigzag motion these to get these in so they stick up more than the big pink heart does. Cut your carryover threads. Looking very nice, isn't it? Now with a needle, and we are just about done. Now, I want the needle to appear rounded, so I'm going to stitch it in that direction across the needle to give it that roundness appearance. It's kind of hard to do that though with it being so small at the tip, so I've changed my mind. I'm just going to run my stitches down the needle. So I got a nice point on that end. This is where the needle crosses over. clean up all the little stitches that are crossing over. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and pull the cap off of the hoop by just pulling it toward the center. Always pulling to the middle so that this doesn't happen and we can patch that and use that stabilizer for our next project. So you can see how nice and clean this pulled away. We're just going to tear off the little bit that didn't come off. And now to pull off the stuff on the top. See how that tore clean away because we used so many stitches along there. Pulling toward the embroidery and kind of at an angle. Push down on the cap and then pull and tear. Now 
Now after this cap has been washed, it'll look the same as it does right now because of the permanent pink stabilizer that we put behind that thread. Whenever you choose to use our vinyl cover, remember it will not wash out. So you don't want to use it in areas where you have cross-stitching cross or, um, for instance, if you were to look at a tennis racket, you would only want to use the cover-up where the handle is, not where all of the, the uh, netting is of the actual tennis racket. There I have a cute little baseball cap that says I love quilting and if you loved what you saw today I hope that you'll hit the like button and if you have yet to subscribe well please do so today. Thanks for watching.